Skip Anderson, Associate Editor of Jack Interventions, and I'm here today to interview Dr. Jorge Saucedo from the University of Oklahoma in Oklahoma City regarding a paper of his to be published in Jack Interventions entitled Characteristics and In-Hospital Outcomes of Patients with Non-ST Segment Myocardial Infarction and Chronic Kidney Disease Undergoing Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. Welcome, Jorge. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'd like to know uh, first, uh, what questions did you all set out to investigate? Uh, we know very little about patients with chronic kidney disease that present with non-STEMI and come to the CAT lab and end up having an angioplasty. So basically, we wanted to characterize mm -hmm. most of all this patient population, the CKD patient with non-STEMI that undergoes PCI. Uh, our uh, main hypothesis was, of course, that these patients were going to have worse clinical outcomes, and we tried to focus our uh, research on hard endpoints such as death and bleeding complications in this group of patients. I see. And where did you obtain your uh, data set for examining this? Yes. We thought that one of the best databases in the nation precisely to look into this is the Action Get With The Guidelines uh, registry. Mm -hmm. So we were able to obtain uh, about 40,000 patients that fulfilled the inclusion criteria over a three-year period time that had precisely uh, these patients that came with non-STEMI and came to the CAT lab and had, had an angioplasty. Uh, the, these patients were then uh, uh, studied based on the renal function and outcomes were looked at. I see. And how did you group the patients um, with uh, chronic kidney disease? You created groups. That, that is correct. So of these 40,000 patients, we decided that the best way to look at renal function or calculate GFR based on the data points that we have from the Action Gate with the Guidelines uh, collection data form uh, it was to use the MDRD equation. Mm -hmm. So we uh, group our patients based on GFR less than 30, so those would be patients stage uh, up to stage uh, a two uh, a, as, as normal uh, renal function. And then uh, patients who had uh, stage uh, CKD three, four, and five, uh, we compared uh, uh, against patients that had those GFRs greater than 60. So basically four groups. Four groups. So the, the no disease and the mild disease Correct. were formed one group, and then the higher level disease formed the other three groups. Correct. And the dialysis patients were considered the most severe. That was the, the uh, yeah, less than GFRs less than 15, uh, including dialysis patients, were included in the CKD stage five. I see. And what was your primary outcome measure? Death. Uh, so we looked at death. We did multivariate analysis, and uh, what we found, uh, as you could have expected, is that patients that come to the cath lab have an angioplasty and have renal dysfunction had higher death. Mm -hmm. And it was quite dramatic indeed. So uh, when we looked at the patients without CKD, the mortality rate, in hospital mortality rate, was 0.6%. If we looked at the group that had the highest mortality, the CKD stage four, mortality rate was over 6%. So there was 10 times greater mortality in patients with CKD stage four. And that, is, that was one of the most interesting findings of, of our paper that was led by one of our fellows, uh, mm -hmm. former fellows, Elias Hanna, uh, that the stage four CKD patients actually were the ones that did worse. I see. So how can interventionalists use this information that you're, you're publishing? Well, if, 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 you, if, if I can add a little bit to part of the story, uh, because although that was our primary measure, there were a couple of very important findings, which I think are probably more relevant for the interventional cardiologist. Uh, these were the patients that, of course, the physician thought that they were healthy enough, CKD patients healthy enough to go uh, to the cat lab and have an angioplasty. Despite this, we found that many of these patients did not receive a guideline recommended therapy, M less uh, use of statins, less use of antithrombin agents, beta blockers, and so forth and so on. So that was quite interesting. Um, the second thing was the bleeding issue as well, and I would like to narrow, because that was also one of our more relevant uh, outcome measures, and we found that there was a threefold 
uh, that is after multivariate analysis, greater risk of mm -hmm. bleeding complications as defined by the action get with the guidelines bleeding score in the CKD stage four as compared to uh, the patients without CKD or minimal CKD. So I think that more, more information, more uh, 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 data are needed to try to better characterize therapies that would improve the outcome of these patients. But these are clearly very, very high risk patients that deserve the attention of the intervention list to uh, try to, 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 to improve those uh, uh, outcomes such as death or, or bleeding. Right, okay, thank you very much, Jorge. Thank you for joining us. This is Dr. Skip Anderson, Associate Editor of Jack Interventions.